So now this piece is, you guys should probably know how this is done now. Mm -hmm. You got some ideas, right? Come on, Scott. Just like the bottom of the bubble jar. Yeah. With the so again, we've got this sort of a donut of a form, which means it needs to have a hole in it. So we'll start there. And unlike most pots, I went all the way through to the wheel head, where you don't normally want to do that. Unless you're it's ceramics 101, and you might have done it a few times. <laughs> I've done it in ceramics 2000. <laughs> so I'm going to kind of create a two-walled vessel. And as it, it, after, um, when you guys come up, you can probably tell somewhat from that, that picture. Um, the, the fragment of that piece is really what told me the story of how it's made and also the story of that it was made with such incredible skill and care and um, elegance that it was certainly a piece that the potter used to represent his art. Yes, it is a functional piece. So I'm kind of throwing this sort of tall flared form with the interior wall. To give me beginnings of what will end up allowing me to create this particular form. There was um, so much archaeological evidence from those that I could see that with consistency, these things were made a certain way. They um, overlapping of one part of the wall to the other was specific, and it didn't vary uh, between the number of fragments we looked at. I do want to mention that Ceramics in America is really the only publication available that you can find um, the depth of information of what we're touching on today. Um, truly il illustrated in scholarship, design, photography. I mean, it is an amazing publication. And without that publication, none of what I've done in 25 years would be uh, published, especially in the way that it has been. So uh, it's a very important endeavor on the Chipstone Foundation's part, Rob's part, and all the fantastic um, people who contribute to that effort. And I have a couple back there. <laughs> so I'm throwing the exterior wall up. And I'm going to start to sort of hint at them coming closer together. You have to throw the interior of the shape as well. So because the thing is mirrored on the back side and the front side, like you know when I threw the handle it had a flat side that was sitting on the wheel. Well the interior of this has to allow me to come back and turn it over and trim it so that it will be a mirror image of the front side for the most part. It does vary a little bit on the antiques as well as my own, but for the most part, it um, has the same volume on both sides. And there's a lot lesser ring bottles being made in this period, so um, nobody had to go to this extent to make such a beautiful pot for any practical. So I've started to bring that in and curve it in, and I'm going to start to bring this out and curve it out. And 
And also, try to keep in mind the other aspects of the form, like the width of the piece, the diameter of that interior hole. It's easy to uh, make that too wide. I feel like I might have not closed it out a little bit. So you have to kind of um, get everything in the right place for this piece. It's not all that uh, straightforward in terms of making it happen. Michelle, are you trying to keep water out of the interior of that? I am, and um, it's a very good question. And the more that ends up in there, the longer it takes to dry. I did, um, earlier I was a lot more conscious about getting it out when I threw that one that I pre-threw. There we go. Because... Just want to adhere those together. So the water on the interior can cause you a real problem later. Oops, you'll see, because I got distracted. Uh. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's your fault. It's your fault. <laughs> You can see that it's going to pop up because don't forget you're trapping air in there. And aren't you glad when you're full? Yeah. <laughs> 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 